What's up guys? So I'm actually here today to talk about knee issues in relation to skateboarding because of all the problems that come from just constant jumping, landing, and jumping, landing. Not only on top of that is that when we go to click tricks, uh, and we have that jump, lift, that extension where we're really kicking the knee out, uh, the muscles used in that can get really tight. And if they don't recover, they don't lengthen, um, so on, they can actually create a lot of problems with the knee. Sometimes we'll get jumper's knee, we'll have pain just below the knee, um, other issues like some tendonitis, quadricep tendonitis, stuff like that. And a lot of them are related to the lateral quad, okay? Um, so when we're doing these things and trying to take care of our bodies to be able to not have pain or to get rid of pain that we're already having, if you're having some clicking, if you're having some irritation in the knee that doesn't go away until you're nice and warm, this video is for you. So the quadricep is made of four muscles, quad, core, you know, we kind of should have that association and even if you've made it only through middle school. But when we go in to do oftentimes normal stretches, they don't really work too well on the quad. Now, three of the four muscles in the quad don't actually pass the hip. So when we're doing things like, you know, pulling the heel back and, you know, sitting on and collapsing the knee, this is as long as three or four, three or four of those muscles are gonna be. And the one that we're talking about and mainly talking about today is one of those muscles. So if you can sit like this between your heels, this is as much stretching as you're really gonna get out of the quads. So when you go into doing, you know, standing and pulling your foot back, you're really only stretching the hip flexor at that point. Can the hip flexor affect how tight the quads are? Totally. But the problem is it's not a really long-term or consistent solution for some of that knee pain that we can get when we just are skating all the time. In fact, a uh, guy I know, Adam, uh, he was the one that I, I posted the video on this uh, doing some tricks. Uh, when he was in Barcelona, he said that he was getting some issues with his knees and because he was skating every time, every day, all over the place, stuff like that. And so part of it is just overuse, overuse issues, doing a lot, and the body just doesn't recover from it. So today I'm going to show you guys a method to actually treat the specific area that can create a lot of the, ir the irritability in the quad. One of the things we need to kind of understand is how muscle tissue works. For one, muscle tissue is kind of like a rubber band, okay? It shortens and it lengthens, so I can make it shorter, okay? Or I can let it go long and it'll be tighter, okay? So one of the methods we're gonna to use today is called a tack and floss. So this is using a foam roll um, or lacrosse ball. For the quads, foam roll typically works really well. But what we're gonna do is actually tack down that, that band, that muscle, to really try to pull and segment and try to get more lengthening out of the quad. So this is as long as the quad is going to get, right? Well, technically wrong. We can actually get more stretch or more lengthening and more release out of the muscle tissue when we do this tack and floss method. So, for example, if I take this and I, you know, do this, this is about as tight as it's going to be. So, if I take this, let's say this side is my knee, if I take this and I pinch it on the tissue and I drag that tissue up a little bit, this is a lot tighter over here. So this is the tack. What I'm trying to do is start from the bottom. So this is my knee and that's my hip. I'm gonna put it against the tissue. I'm gonna kind of push it up towards my hip a little bit. And then I'm gonna move my knee back and forth. So I'm actually, every time I lift and move the knee, it gets tighter. Now that you kind of understand how the tack and floss works, I'm gonna show you actually how to do it specifically to the lateral quad. A lot of times when you watch people in their Instagram stories or whatever, a pro skater that you may like, so on, when you see them on the foam roll, you see them on the foam roll on the side of the leg. So when you're doing the side of the leg, this is a spot called the IT band or iliotibial band. And this has got a bunch of nerves in it, stuff like that. Yeah, it'll pretty much always hurt when you go on it, but you don't get the lateral quad. Then the other position you'll see people in is straight on the full roll, 
and this is good, and we can like sit in the position and you know move the knee through and so on and try to roll through and get in the middle of the quad because we're right on the front, but we're still not hitting the lateral. So we actually need to be turned off to about a 45 degree angle onto the quad. So just like I showed with the, the band, I'm actually going to start at the knee. I'm going to put some weight on it and I'm going to drag that knee away so it's pushing up the tissue up into the hip and then put my weight on it. So from here, I'm going to bend and cause my quad, if that lower portion, to get longer. And so this is doing kind of that segmented stretching or pulling apart of those fibers in the lower position and get them to release. So if I can take my heel all the way to my butt, ooh, my knee, you know, shift a little bit because it's, you know, kind of pulling on it. Um, but I feel where I'm tight, okay? So another way to describe this is that what we're trying to do is get some of the muscle fibers to release. So if I'm tight and wound up, the muscle fibers weave kind of like this. So when they're tight, they action and they will contract and they'll shorten and they'll weave into each other kind of here. So sometimes when you rest or you relax or you're recovering, um, they don't completely release. And so this, these are slightly innervated or active muscle fibers. So by doing the tissue work, we're trying to get the nervous system to get them to relax. Well, yeah, if we put the pressure on it, it'll help. Sometimes it doesn't always help. So when I go in and I tack it down and I pull against it to get this area tight, so then when I stretch it out a little bit more, when I, I bend that knee more, it actually forces these to kind of semi-pull apart. It's almost like when you've had a string that you thought had a knot in it, and you just go and pull it apart and it goes Bink! and then there's no knot there it's kind of the same thing we're trying to get rid of a knot uh, so then we just work from the knee and we go all the way up pretty simple okay so that's that's the method to do it that's the method to really be able to attack it you can use it on the lateral quad you can even do this on the front of the quad you can use this in the hamstrings i'm going to show you another uh, variation for this or the opposing muscle that oftentimes will be aggravated when this quad is aggravated contributing to knee problems or knee, knee stress. So continuing with the, the tack and floss, we can do this with the hamstring as well. Oftentimes we'll get irritated in the lateral hamstring, skateboarding because we use them a lot, um, sometimes in the inner hamstring from pushing a lot. And so we can either use a single lacrosse ball and kind of do that same thing where we're starting you know, behind the knee and I'm going to put my weight on it. I'm going to kind of push it forward so it pulls that lower section tight. And then I'm going to extend. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, that, that definitely feels it. Extend where it starts pulling it and trying to segment, trying to pull those fibers to be woven nice and, nice and straight so the tissue is at its optimum length. And then I'll work up. I'll go a little bit higher, reset the tack, extend it out. And I'll run that all the way up. I'll turn this way. The underside of the hamstring. So we have the IT band, like I said. And then underneath that, we have that lateral hamstring in there. And so I'll tack it down. I'll roll and kind of shove it forward. And then I'm going to oh, straighten out. Like I feel that all the way down into the calf where it's pulling and tight because it is tight. So it's not the most it's not the most comfortable thing in the world but tissue work rarely is if you've ever been to a really good manual therapist um some of you skaters have ooh, that's a good spot uh, <laughs> so, so, some of you skaters have been to some of those good manual therapists if you you know if you're riding with a good company you know some of the guys from red bull man they get treated so good with this stuff, but when they go through and do that manual therapy, it sucks. Now, doing that tissue work, even before, like I still have some irritation I'm trying to work through, but even just doing that little bit of tissue work, my knee feels perfectly normal now. It doesn't go away after one session. It's something you need to do multiple times, and so if it hurts when you get on it, 
it needs to be done. That's a general rule of thumb when it comes to tissue work. And using lacrosse balls, using a hard foam roller, stuff like that works. Do this a couple times a week. Um, if, you have, if you have irritation, if not almost every day, that's what I've been doing. If you don't have this issue, you may be coming up on it, so it might be something to just add into your routine to keep you healthy so you can skate more. Because that's the goal. We wanna keep healthy so we can skate more. All right, see you guys soon.